overnight accommodations, the Coast Guard should require secondary means of escape into a space that is different than the primary exit space so that a single fire would not affect both escape routes, something that we saw in this tragedy. We also recommended that small passenger vessels have smoke detectors in all accommodation spaces. In this particular event, the smoke detectors were just in the bunk room. The fire most likely did not originate in the bunk room. And the smoke detectors that are installed in these accommodation spaces need to be interconnected so that if one sounds in one area of the boat, it would sound throughout the entire vessel. We recommended that Truth Aquatics implement safety management systems. And we also reiterated a recommendation that we made in 2012 to the Coast Guard to require U.S. flag vessels to have safety management systems. And this is something that Congress mandated 10 years ago that the Coast Guard implement. And we're still waiting to see any semblance of a rule coming out of that. And as I said, this tragedy did not need to happen. And we hope that future, that we hope that our actions from today will prevent such disasters in the future. So I'll be glad to take any questions that you may have. And as Eric said, just uh, raise your hand. I'll call on you. And uh, once I call on you, just state your name and your affiliation, if you would kindly. Thank you very much. Margaret, Margaret from KNX, hello. Hello, sir, hello, Chair. Um, is it frustrating to you that you've had recommendations in the past uh, with regard to the U.S. Coast Guard that have not been implemented and then you have a tragedy like this? Absolutely, it's frustrating. We make recommendations, not just on a whim, our safety recommendations are based on, on tragedies like we saw with the Conception. And we come out with good recommendations, and it is very frustrating when we have another accident that could have been prevented had those recommendations been implemented. Absolutely. Thank you for your question. Let's see. Next question. Margaret, I think your hand is still up. I don't know if you have a follow on, but I'll be glad to take a follow on if you like. Uh, no, I actually still had it up. I apologize. Uh, that's okay. Thanks. We're all learning. All right. Let's see here. Um, anybody else? Okay. Margaret, uh, looks like she's got a, got a question now. Another one. Yeah. What would your message be to Truth Aquatics given the determination uh, that you made today with regard to the probable cause? What would your message be to Truth Aquatics? Clean up your act. Now, the reason I say that is we saw a number of procedural deviations, things that that were non-standard, things that they were not following their own procedures. They weren't necessarily following Coast Guard regulations. And, and just if you see one of those, it might just be a one-off event. But we saw repeated cases of procedural deviation, and that you know, you, you get used to, well, we're not going to have the roving patrol. We don't really need that. And then that becomes the normal way of doing it. And so the message is clean up your act, follow your procedures, and as we recommended today, implement safety management systems. There's uh, Stephanie. Thanks very, uh, thanks very much, Chairman. Can you address um, what you think the impact will have on the industry if these changes aren't made per your recommendations, uh, which is, seems to be the case a lot of the time? Do you think that um, boat owners and operators will sort of continue to basically get away with murder? What we're hoping is that this tragedy will be a, it will be a watershed event that will help change things in the industry. We've seen watershed events in other modes of transportation. We cannot let this disaster, this tragedy go to waste. So our recommendations are broad reaching. They're to the, they're to the Coast Guard, 
They're to the Small Passenger uh, Vessel Association. They're to the California Sport Fishing Association. We, we, we want to take a broad approach with the hopes that these recommendations will be implemented to improve safety of small passenger vessels. Okay, uh, who else? Folks, once again, if you want to ask a question, please check on the uh, hand uh, symbol on the top of your screen. And you're welcome to turn on your cameras uh, if you like. I like to see who's who's out there right now. I just see a bunch of uh, a bunch of initials. And um, so turn on your camera. Uh, Stephanie, do you still have have one? Go right ahead, please. Yes, I, I have another question. Um, what message do you have to the victims' families? Well, I spoke to the victims' families this morning, and certainly uh, our our sincerest condolences go out to them. I know that may sound like a cliche, but it's not. One of our employees had her best friend that was a victim of this tragedy. So we really, you know, it, 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 it's absolutely tragic. Um, our entire purpose for being here is to find out what happened so that others don't have to go through what they and their loved ones have gone through. ABC News 10, go right ahead. That, that didn't work. I was trying to call on people just so they'd ask questions. I'm here for you. We're here for you. So if you've got questions, please take advantage of it. Um, I'll, I'll keep going if no one else has them. Please, absolutely. Um, how most most of the time in, in investigations, probable causes are are definitive. Um, like you said that you weren't able to do that. Do you typically and I don't normally cover the NTSB, so this is sort of a procedural question. Do you typically label a probable cause to be someone's inaction or or failure on a, like this we we do because accidents don't happen by uh, inanimate objects don't cause uh, accidents in my opinion uh, accidents are caused by people and organizations and clearly the organization here truth aquatics did not do what they were required to do to ensure the safety of those people who were paying to be aboard aboard that ship, or even a crew member for that matter, who unfortunately lost her life. I do want to point out the the difficulty. There there might be some that say, well, the NTSB uh, could not solve this accident. Um, you know, I want to point out that we we only can work with what we have is you've seen the, the pictures of that vessel, there was hardly anything at all left of the upper deck. The main deck, not a lot left of that. And of course the bunk room, the lower, the, the lower deck, uh, there was some structure still there, but it was completely burned out. This vessel turned upside down. Uh, it sank in 60 feet of water and was found on the ocean floor upside down where it remained for 10 days. So determining the precise ignition source in a situation like in a situation like that would be well I'll say it was impossible because our investigators tried but that's not really the issue. The issue is not necessarily what actually sparked the accident. The issue is what could have prevented it. And we know that having that roving patrol would have provided an early detection so that once the fire did start, it would have likely it would have increased the opportunity for those passengers to have safely escaped. Stephanie, one more. You're welcome to it. <laughs> no, Thank, okay. you. Thank you, Chairman. I appreciate it. Um, the sheriff has characterized when the brief when the briefing started during uh when we were all in santa barbara 
they kept saying that these people didn't suffer, that they probably were, they died in their sleep. The, they didn't do full autopsies. Um, and the coroner's reports mentioned that they had shoes. Some people had shoes on, some people had clothing on, but they really declined to go as far as saying these people were awake. Your investigators did. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and, and why the discrepancy and should have been full coroner, full autopsies on these victims? Well, I won't comment on, uh, on the actions of the Santa Barbara Sheriff coroner. Um, because that's that's their business. We we did find evidence um, that that uh, at least some of the uh, bunk room occupants were. I'm going to let this person in. Uh, some of these uh, bunk room occupants were alive uh, at the time of, of the fire. And uh, I'm looking for the exact wording that we came out with, but um, um, we did. I was just trying to find the exact wording uh, in the in the findings. Most of the victims were awake, but could not escape the bank the bunk room before they were overcome by a smoke inhalation. So that's what we what we believe. And uh, the sheriff, the coroner, they're welcome to believe what what they want to believe. But this is what our investigation has determined. Okay, one we have time for one more question. Anyone uh, want to raise their hand? There's Lita, Lita Martinez, Martinez. Go right ahead, you might be muted. Okay, go ahead. Lita Mar Martinez, Martinez. Hi hey, folks, can you, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, excellent. I, I just had a quick question regarding um, the roving watch requirement. And I believe this was something that was mentioned um, at some point in today's meeting. My understanding in my notes here is that the Coast Guard hasn't cited a passenger vessel for a lack of a roving watch since I believe 1991. And I know you opened this Q&A session with a very stern message for Truth Aquatics. And by extension, I imagine that applies for other operators to take heed as well. But I'm just curious about whether that message also extends to the Coast Guard and with respect to doing its part to keep its regulations up to date. Absolutely, and uh, I, I don't know if you, yeah, I think you did watch the board meeting. I mean, we did have some pretty stern uh, words about the Coast Guard. I mean, it's a, it's a fine agency and they do wonderful work, uh, but we did feel like they, they, uh, they fell down on, uh, on the requirement to have, um, a, a regulatory requirement for smoke detection in all accommodation spaces. And so if this vessel had been operating inter internationally, for example, it would have been required by international standards to have that sort of smoke detection capability uh, in all accommodation spaces. Uh, but since it was just a domestic vessel, uh, the Coast Guard had not required that. So, um, and, and as you may have noticed too, we specifically added the, the Coast Guard, the, the wording of the U.S. Coast Guard into the probable cause statement because they are the regulatory authority for these types of vessels. So, yes, we, we, we do believe the Coast Guard needs to do more. And uh, speci uh, specifically, uh, what we just called out, we issued seven recommendations to the Coast Guard and um, we want them to also implement that SMS rule that was uh, recommended by, required by Congress a decade ago. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, thank you, Chairman. This concludes the uh, virtual media briefing. Thank you.